was only my third mission. I was green. I didn't know what war was like until I went to Berlin. On March 6, 1944, American air crews in the 8th Air Force learned that they are going to Berlin, the most dangerous target in the Third Reich. We hit everything in Germany that was worth hitting, except Berlin. We knew, everybody knew darn well, that Berlin would happen sooner or later. The 8th will send a massive force, 730 bombers and 801 escort fighters. A 15-mile-long parade of American aircraft will thunder across the heart of Berlin for 30 minutes. At the briefing that morning, crews are told they will meet fierce resistance and face the most powerful air defense system in the world. Nearly a thousand German fighter planes along the flight path from the English Channel to Berlin. Once over the city, 745 German anti-aircraft guns will be aimed directly at the American formation. But the 8th will attack these defenses with a most formidable armada of bombers and fighter planes. The greatest air battle to date is about to begin. The 8th Air Force bombers take off from England under sparkling blue skies and form up over the North Sea. Men, we're headed to Hitler's town. As the bomber train approaches the German border, a 45 mile per hour crosswind pushes the 1st Air Division off course. The 3rd Air Division, including the lead 100th Bomb Group, stays the course. Navigator to pilot. We're fighting a crosswind. I can't see the end of the 1st Division anymore. Roger that. Remain on course. A 20 mile gap opens between the two divisions. Without fighter support, the 3rd Division is now dangerously exposed to German fighters. Has anyone seen our escorts lately? No sign of them. Where the hell are they? Bandit! On your toes, boys. Bandit to 12 o'clock high. German fighters approaching at 200 yards per second slam into the 3rd Division. Wave after wave of them, 50 abreast, they attack head on. The 100th Bomb Group gets the worst of it. Minutes later, the sky is filled with acrid black smoke and mangled bombers in death spins. Airmen leap from the doomed planes, some without parachutes. The high squadron is gone! All of it! Within minutes, 15 B-17s from the 100th Bomb Group are lost. As the remaining bombers reach the city, enemy anti-aircraft guns unleash a barrage of flak. It's the thickest blanket of flak the bomber crews have ever seen. This flak is so thick you can walk on it. Battling the piercing cold, it's 30 degrees below zero inside the bombers. Many crewmen are bathed in fright sweat. Patchy cloud cover obscures their target, a ball bearing plant. Through holes in the clouds, they attack. Away. When the bombers clear the flak field, the German fighters renew their attack. Bandits incoming. I'm going to form up on what's left of the lead squadron. Here come the fighters again. 12 o'clock high. Little friend coming at 10 o'clock. American P-51 Mustang fighters reach the formation and tear into the German ME-109s in one of the greatest dogfights of World War II. It's like hand-to-hand -hand combat, with opposing fighter pilots flying so close they can see each other's eyes. The Mustangs give the Americans the edge as they slaughter the Luftwaffe fighters. The surviving and battered B-17 bombers turn and head back to England. The 8th Air Force suffered its highest single mission losses of World War II during the Berlin Raid. But with the bombers as bait, American fighter pilots killed many of the Luftwaffe's best fighters, turning the tide of the air war in the Allies' favor. Known as Black Monday, the raid initiated a campaign of attrition that devastated the once mighty Luftwaffe. Gaining control of the skies over Europe allowed the Allies to undertake a crucial mission exactly three months later, 
the D-Day invasion of Normandy. 